Hey guys, it's Miss Ortiz. Sorry I wasn't able to upload this video um, earlier. I was having some difficulties. But here we are, chapter 27 of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, this chapter is a little bit long, so I just want to let you guys know ahead of time that we will be doing this chapter in three parts, okay? Chapter 27, part one will be posted today. It is called Mike TV is sent by television. Mike TV was even more excited than Grandpa Joe at seeing a bar of chocolate being sent by television. But Mr. Wonka, he shouted, can you send other things through the air in the same way? Breakfast cereal, for instance. Oh, my sainted aunt, cried Mr. Wonka. Don't mention that disgusting stuff in front of me. Do you know what breakfast cereal is made of? Uh, it's made of those little curly wooden shavings you find in pencil sharpen. But could you send it by television if you wanted to, as you do chocolate? asked Mike TV. Of course I could. And what about people? asked Mike TV. Could you send a real life person from one place to another in the same way? <gasps> a person, cried Mr. Wonka. Are you off your rocket? But could it be done? Good heavens, child, I really don't know. I suppose it could. Yes, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could. I wouldn't like to risk it, though. It might have some very nasty results. But Mike TV was already running off, was already off and running. The moment he heard Mr. Wonka saying, I'm pretty sure it could, of course it could. He turned away and started running as fast as he could toward the other end of the room where the great camera was standing. Look at me, he shouted as he ran. I'm going to be the first person in the world to be sent by television. No, 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 cried Mr. Wonka. Mike, screamed Mrs. TV. Stop! Come back! You'll be turned into a million tiny pieces. But there was no stopping Mike TV now. The crazy boy rushed on, and when he reached the enormous camera, he jumped straight for the switch, scattering Oompa Loompas right and left as he went. See you later, alligator, he shouted, and he pulled down the switch, and as he did so, he leaped out into the full glare of the mighty lens. There was a blight, blinding flash. Then there was silence. Then Mrs. TV ran forward. But she stopped dead in the middle of the room, and she stood there. She stood staring at the place where her son had been. And her great red mouth opened wide, and she screamed, He's gone! He's gone! Great heavens! He has gone! shouted Mr. TV. Mr. Wonka hurried forward and placed a hand gently on Mrs. TV's shoulder. We shall have to hope for the best, he said. We must pray that your little boy will come out unharmed at the other end. Mike, screamed Mrs. TV, clasping her head in her hands. Where are you? I'll tell you where he is, said Mr. TV. He's whizzing around above our heads in a million tiny pieces. Don't talk about it, wailed Mrs. TV. We must watch the television set, said Mr. Wonka. He may come through any moment. Mr. and Mrs. TV and Grandpa Joe and little Charlie and Mr. Wonka all gathered around the television and stared tensely at the screen. The screen was quite blank. He's taking a heck of a long time to cross, come across, said Mr. TV, wiping his brow. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mr. Wonka. I do hope that no part of him gets left behind. What on earth do you mean? asked Miss Mr. TV sharply. I don't wish to alarm you, said Mr. Wonka, but it does sometimes happen that only about half the little pieces find their way into the television set. It happened last week. I don't know why, but the result was that only half a cho um sorry half a bar of chocolate came through mrs tv let out a scream of horror <gasps> you mean only half of mike is coming back to us she cried uh let's hope it's the top half said mr tv hold everything
sleeping, said Mr. Wonka. Watch the screen. Something's happening. The screen had suddenly began to flicker. Then some wavy lines appeared. Mr. Wonka adjusted one of the knobs and the wavy lines went away. And now, very slowly, the screen began to get brighter and brighter. Here he comes, yelled Mr. Wonka. Yes, that's him all right. Is he all in one piece? cried Miss TV. I'm not sure, said Mr. Wonka. It's too early to tell. Faintly at first, but becoming clearer and clearer every second, the picture of Mike TV appeared on the screen. He was standing up and waving at the audience and grinning from ear to ear. But he's, he's a midget, shouted Mr. TV. Mike, cried Mrs. TV. Are you all right? Are there any bits of you missing? Isn't he going to get any bigger, shouted Mr. TV. Talk to me, Mike, cried Miss TV. Say something. Tell me you're all right. A tiny little voice, no louder than the squeaking of a mouse, came out of the television set. Hi, Mom, it said. Hi, Pop. Look at me. I'm the first person ever to be sent by television. Grab him, ordered Mr. Wonka. Quick! Mrs. TV shot out a hand and picked the tiny figure of Mike TV out of the screen. All right, you guys, I'm going to pause here. Next Friday, I will continue reading a part two of chapter 27. Have a good weekend, you guys.